full use of it. So today at 1 o'clock, there's going to be volleyball over in the gym. And uh, there's also, they're going to be doing the crafts at the 1 o'clock hour also. They're making uh, bouncy balls and butterflies. And then for those of you that are in the skits, the three little pigs, and I heard we had one pig butchered, so we only have two now. So you all figure that out later. But uh, it's going to be at 1 o'clock for those of the, that are involved in those skits, uh, uh, the trees. And also oh, that's what we got this year, 85 trees, a forest. Um, so those that are involved in the skits, be here at 1 for your final practice. And then at 2 o'clock, all of us will be here to see these skits this afternoon. And then right after the skits, when we exit here, we'll go just outside the door to the right, and they'll be having the baptismal service there. And if there's any more that desire to be baptized here at camp, uh, first off, let your folks know. Make sure it's okay with them. And then uh, let myself or Brother Lindsey McGrady know so that we can uh, get you in the list. So also at 3 o'clock today, it'll be your last opportunity to get your hair done. Sisters, not you brothers. But if the brothers need haircuts, uh, Trevor brought his shears. He only brought one guard, and uh, it's the real short one. So it's a buzz cut, I think we used to call it. Uh, so, But he says he's very experienced, and so uh, if you all need that, you can come at 3 o'clock, and he'll take care of you. Uh, if you've been working on crafts this week, if you started a train and painted it and never put it together, or if you started a painting and never picked it up, or or you got your new pet rock and you left it behind, so you need to take your pet rock home, make sure you go by in the cafeteria today and pick up those crafts that you started. And if you are still trying to make your worry warm, uh, get with Sister Becky Gibbons and we'll get those worry warms finished up so you can take those home to worry about. And I won't have to worry about them. All right, um, need a couple, little bit of help today. Uh, be in the last full day um, when you're out and about. Uh, let's make sure we get all the trash picked up. I know over around the gym, I saw a lot of stuff. They tell me over here behind the, uh, the, the tower that there's a lot of trash. So we just want to get everything picked up. We want to leave a good reputation with those that we rent from that, uh, we're, that we pick up after ourselves. And I think that's all the announcements. There'll be some more announcements uh, for this evening service, some things that we'll do. If there's any of you that are not in a rush to leave tomorrow, I, it takes a lot of people to help clean. Uh, if you, want to, if you ever thought you might want to be in the space program, uh, we have backpack sweepers that make you look like an astronaut. And so this whole auditorium has to be swept. And so those of you that have ever run a sweeper at home before, you know um, at home it don't take very long, but this takes a long time to sweep this whole auditorium. So I'm going to need some help with that tomorrow and all these windows that the pigs got on. And uh, so we need to wash all those windows before we leave to make it look good. And we got one hot announcement. A change, a change. A change in venue. Be beauty shop is at 12 o'clock, not 3. Oh. The hair clinic okay. for the girls. Okay. So for the girls is at 12. All right. And if you brothers need your hair cut, just see Trevor. And he, he I think they're battery powered. He can do it on the run. All right. So uh, we're good. Uh, all right. So did you get that? 12 o'clock. If you want to get your hair done one last time, 12 o'clock, learn a new hairstyle. And... Uh, I trust that you've had a good week, and uh, the weatherman, he, he on his uh, report this morning, he says it's not going to it's going to be cloudy, but it's not going to be raining, and it's going to be seven degrees cooler than yesterday. So we're thankful for that. So that'll be a, a good day. Amen. All right, as our brother comes to lead us in worship this morning, let's just sing that chorus to the Lord. He looked beyond my faults, and he saw a need. Even when we didn't realize what we needed. You know, sometimes we're craving something and we don't know. Brother Branham told a story one time about a little boy. He was chewing the pedals off the bicycle. And they couldn't figure out why, why does he keep eating the, the pedals on the bicycle? And then they found he had a deficiency. He was craving something. We've also all heard the quote, deep calls to the deep when there's a desire for something to meet that need. And this morning, our Heavenly Father saw what we had need of. And He looked down through the quarters of time and saw us right here this morning. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. Oh. 
He saw your need this morning, amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Praise the Lord, amen. Let's all stand this morning, amen. Praise the Lord. How many has come to have church again today, amen? We're here just for one more day, but amen. We're just, amen. There's so much more we have in store, amen. So thankful for what God's got in store for us today, amen. Let's sing that song, amen. Victory is mine. I know we did this yesterday. I just, it's a simple, simple little song, but it's, it's so true, amen. How, how many has got the victory in Jesus this morning? Victory in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Help me sing it if you know it. Well, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Yes, it is mine. Well, I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Sing it again. Well, now victory is mine. Victory is mine, yes it is, victory today, thank God it's mine, I told Satan to get thee behind, victory today is mine, sing this now, well joy is mine, yes joy is mine, joy today, oh yes it's mine, well I told Satan to get thee behind, because joy today is mine, well, healing is mine, yes, healing is mine, healing today, oh, yes, it's mine, well, I told Satan to get thee behind, because healing today is mine, well, this message is mine, well, the message is mine. The message today. Oh, is it yours? Amen. I told Satan to get thee behind. Cause the message today is mine. Let's sing this now. The Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost today. Amen. It's already yours this morning. I told Satan to get thee behind. Because the Holy Sing this now. Well, deliverance is mine. Deliverance is mine. Yes, it is. Deliverance today. Yes, it is. Well, I told Satan to get thee behind. Deliverance today is mine. Well, freedom is mine. Yes, freedom is mine. Oh, freedom today. Real true liberty. Amen. I told Satan to get thee behind, cause freedom today is mine. Well, the rapture is mine, the rapture is mine. Yes, the rapture today, yes, it's mine. Well, I told Satan to get thee behind, 
the rapture today is mine. Well, when I woke up this morning, I never did have a doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out, and I'm glad he did. So I got down on my knees, I said, Lord, help me, please. And I got up singing and shouting the victory. And I said, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today. Oh, yes, it's my will. I told Satan to get thee behind. It's victory today is mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Why can I will? I do believe. I can I will. I do believe. Well, I can I will. And I do believe that Jesus heals me now. Yes, I can, I will. I do believe I can, I will. Oh, I do believe I can, I will. I do believe that my Jesus sees. Amen. I'm making this witness this morning. I can, I will. I do believe I can, I will. I do believe, oh, I can, I will. Heals me now. Sing like a meter. I can, I will, I do believe. Yes, I can, and I will. And I do believe I can, I will. I do believe that Jesus heals me. Sing one more time. I can, oh, I can, and I will. I do believe I can, oh, I will. I do believe. Well, I can, I will, I do believe that Jesus heals me now. Amen. Do you believe that this morning, amen? That I can and I will and I do believe, amen, because he promised it and he said it, amen. Amen. I'm, we're going to take God at his word, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. You can have your seats, amen, at this time, amen. Amen. I'd like to ask, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this last name. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's uh. Uh, we have we have two specials this morning. The first one is a uh, brother Kenny Kohler. Is, is that the last? Where, where's he at? Is he here this morning? Oh, oh. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> amen. Let's just, amen. Let's, oh, God bless our brother this morning. Amen. playing piano for about a month. The Lord laid the song on my heart last night. So I wrote the chords and the lyrics last night and just yeah. Even when 
Appreciate that special. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, God is so good. Yes, my God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Oh, yes, my God. Oh 
this morning. Amen. Amen. He's not in a tomb, but he's living inside of here. Amen. Praise the Lord. So glad for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's change the Lord's service. You can all stand. Amen. At this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Really appreciate this opportunity to song lead in front of you all. It's just a real, real privilege and a real blessing. Amen. I certainly appreciate Brother Doug for allowing me to share that with you all. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's sing this song. I know before Brother Samuel comes, amen. Let's sing a song. We did this one yesterday. Uh, there is none like you. There's none like you, amen. I mean, I can say there's none like the Lord, amen. There's none like our Lord Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. For I could search for all eternity long and find that there is none like you. There is none I can. There is none like you. so thankful, amen, once again for his mercy and his grace, and let's just go to him in a word of prayer before we turn to the word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, how thankful we are, oh God, for this moment, Lord, that you have given to us, Lord, this week, Lord, of camp, Lord, and oh God, for how that, Lord, you have just been moving among us, Lord, in such a sweet and precious and very real way, Lord. Thank you, Father, oh God, for every one of the lives of these young people, Lord, that are gathered here, Lord, on these grounds, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord, for their hearts, oh God, with a desire to, Lord, that wants to please you and to serve you, Lord, and to see, God, your purpose fulfilled in their lives and I pray that, God, that you'll just continue to bless them, Lord. Not just, Lord, here in this day, but, God, on the oncoming days, Lord, that would lay ahead of us, Lord, should you tarry. Oh, God, may you just continue to become more and more real to them, Lord, in every circumstance, every situation. For, Lord, you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, for what you've already done, Lord, for all the deliverance, all the healing, oh God, for every life, Lord, that you have transformed, oh God. Lord, it's all been because of you, Lord, of your presence, Lord, you coming, Lord. And so as we stand here together once again this morning, Lord, we just desire one thing, and that's, Lord, that you would help us together as speaker and hearer to be able to step aside, Lord, 
You know the things that we have need of. Lord, even those things, Lord, that would need to be said. Things that, Lord, that you've laid on my heart and I've studied, Lord, and just, Lord, of those things in certain directions. But, God, you know what needs to be spoken, Lord. So, Father, my heart, Lord, is reserved to you, Lord, what you desire to say this morning. And that's where our hearts, Lord, are resolved that just to receive from you, O oh God. May you pour out of your spirit, Lord, if there's one here that, Lord, has not met you in that personal way, in the deep satisfaction in their soul to know that they have passed from death unto life, I pray that, God, right here this morning, Lord, may you just pour out, Lord, of yourself, Lord, once again, O oh God, and move for that life, Lord, and for any other need that's among us, Lord, we know that, God, you are Jehovah Jireh, Lord. Lord, Father, you come to minister to all of our needs. So, Lord, we just give ourselves to you, Lord, unreservedly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I just want to say that uh, as we turn to the word of the Lord, I'd like to turn to Colossians chapter 2. And as we're turning there, I want to just say it's just certainly been uh, my honor to be here with you, uh, to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with you, to Stand uh, with the other the ministry that God has brought in here for this week, and I certainly believe that we're gonna we're gonna leave here better people. We're gonna leave here better than when we came. And I believe that was the desire that we we come for. And you know, God is God works in such a way. When we have expectations, God works, and He exceeds our expectations. I'm glad about that, aren't you? Because our expectations, they can go to a certain place and we think, my, they're very high. But God just, he has a way of just exceeding our expectations. And I believe that um, we, we are just looking to him for that. I want to say, I just want to say appreciation to all of the camp staff, the counselors and each one, uh, the cooks and janitors and each one. Because without that, uh, it wouldn't be possible. And uh, obviously also without you being here and I want to say just God bless you and thanks to Brother Doug and amen and, and the efforts he and his wife and also Brother Lindsay and the confidence and, and being able to stand here before you. And I just trust that the things that has been said will be a blessing and be a help to you. And so I just certainly covet your prayers this morning. And uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised us, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. If God would just help us this morning. I'd just like to speak to you on a very simple thought, one word, and that word is complete. Complete. May God bless you, bless the reading of the word as you're being seated. The word's a very common word that we would use. It's uh, nothing that would be beyond or out of our vocabulary. And uh, usually for that, even when I was uh, going and studying to be a school teacher, there sometimes I got into places where I sat down with other people and right up to actually the, right before I was getting ready to graduate and I sat down and there were some words being spoken at a table and I thought, I don't even know what these words mean. 
and different ones because I'd never heard them used before. And, you know, that can be a little intimidating because you think, <laughs> I'm gathered around with people that's going to be future teachers, and I don't understand some of this terminology that they're using. And you start thinking, did I miss something along the way? Did one of my teachers leave something out? And, you know, eventually you kind of get used to hearing how somebody uses a word and and, uh, you know, you, you kind of get used to it. But the word complete is a, is a pretty simple word for us. And, and we pretty much, we understand what that means. And, and we know that even as we're here, you know, if um, you think about that you arrived on Saturday for camp. And maybe some of us arrived a little different times a little later. But here we're standing here on Thursday. And if God tarries through tonight, tomorrow morning we're going to leave. And we'll be able to say it's been a complete camp. But I think there's things that we could say that as far as it's been complete in the number of days that has been allotted uh, for the time in camp, but I don't think anything uh, we could say within camp would be complete without us leaving without a complete experience with God, without us leaving from here without a, a completing of what God desires to do. And it doesn't really matter where you're at today in your walk with God, because let me just say it to you like this. One of the brothers mentioned it last night, and these are some things that many times I've I've thought on and, and mentioned as well. God's not a God that operates by a checklist. It's falling in love with the Lord Jesus, and you never stop falling in love with him. It's something that I think that, you know, once from my wife, that once we had met and we begin to court and then we were engaged and we were married, well, I never stopped falling in love with her. I love her more now than I did then. And she means more to me now than she did when we walked down the aisle 25 years ago. She means more to me. And that's the same way it is in our walk with God. He means more to me now. I, I thought about as I sat over here last night after the service was, was taking place, even while the word was being preached, the only thing I could say as it was coming out of my heart, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for moving on the hearts, Lord. Thank you for touching lives. And I sat over here and just seeing different hearts being touched and blessed and, and knowing that what he's done for me, what he means for me, and just seeing others being blessed by his presence and being ministered to. It's, it's a joy. It's a joy in my heart. It's something, it's a love affair with him that I, I want, don't want to displease him. I want to love him. I want to grow in him. I want to become and serve the purpose that God has called us to serve. I don't want to stop short. It's just like in your schooling. Every one of you, whether you're homeschooled, public school, even when you're in college, there's something you have to complete, whether it's a grade level, it's a chapter, it's a book. Probably every one of us in here have started to read a book sometimes. If you're like me, sometimes there's books you get into and you start reading that book and I get into it and the book just gets boring to me and I put it down. And so I may have read one chapter, two chapter, but if you ask me, did you read that book? I have to tell you, no, I haven't. Because reading the book means where we are completing the book. Whatever the last chapter is, that when we read through that, that's completing the book. You have assignments in school you have to complete, right? If you don't complete that assignment, it's marked as incomplete. And that's the same way that when we look at in our walk with God, there's a desire that God has to be achieved in our life, a purpose. And frankly, to say it in this way, there's nothing can take you off of this earth until God's purpose has been fulfilled. And that's why that death itself cannot touch us. Even throughout, we can look at Brother Branham's life, look through the lives of others. Sometimes it can be something that will puzzle us, where we'll look sometimes in maybe a life that's 19 years old. And here the Lord will take that life, and he takes it on home. And we can look and say, 19 years old, that seems to be such an incomplete life. And yet, if we're looking at it and measuring completeness by being able to uh, uh, buy our own house, go to school, uh, be married, have children, and have grandchildren, and all those things. If that's what we're terming completeness, then I, I, I think that within that we have to come back and see that what true completeness is, is serving the purpose of Almighty God. Because John the Baptist himself was never married, did not own a house. And John the Baptist here, he served the very program of God. He only was only six months that was allotted that he would serve the program of Almighty God. Is that right?
But yet within that six months, it was able to be a completion for what God ordained him for. And what was that great completion? Is to be able to introduce the Messiah. That was the ministry that we was ordained to. Let me just say it to you. You or I, we do not have the promise of tomorrow. I think as I stand here uh, in this camp this morning, it comes back to my mind that here, uh, just back in the fall of this year, I was down in a, uh, with meetings there with um, uh, Brother Nathan Bryan and them and uh, the, the wonderful saints there in New Albany, Indiana. And here I received a call on a, on a late you know, Sunday night and an early, early Monday morning where one of the young men from our assembly who had been traveling in a car back home to college and he was suddenly, there was, a, there was an accident and his life was taken suddenly. And you know, when I, I looked within that and got the call and had to come back uh, home and to minister to that family and to uh, try to, you know, searching, Lord, what, what, what would you have me say? Is there anything to say? Because sometimes we just need to listen. And I would just begin to think of what I begin to think about is and where I drew my comfort from. It's God began to show me that how that, that young man, he had, he had begun to come to back into the assembly. He hadn't always come, but he had begun to come. And one day, I, I went with my family after a Sunday. We did a little getaway, and I got a, I got a text on my phone that said, Brother Samuel, and he gave his name. He says, this is Ryan. He says, and I, I'd like to talk to you. He said, because I'm interested in being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We'd had a very powerful service that day, hearts, many hearts that had been surrendered to the Lord. And I think about as I stood there in that, in that time and I reflected back on it of how that young man going into his senior year, his senior year of high school, he, he said, I said, I, I want to be baptized. Now we had things going on at that time that actually prevented him uh, from coming and being baptized. I, I'm sorry, it was before, it was right after he graduated. And so he prevented us from, because we were working on the baptistry and things like that. But here he came and, and he says, you know, he says, as soon as I get a chance to come home from college, I want to be baptized because we couldn't do it then. And here he made it. There was a break that he had and he came home from college and we baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the testimony that while he was there, because I always knew when he was home on school from break because he was in church and it wasn't just on Sunday. He was in church. He was there on midweek, whether nobody else was or not. He was in the house of God. The testimony was that where that in that dorm where he was staying or with the group that he was staying, out there in that common area, they had a flat screen. And in that common area, when, he, when it came time for service time, he would turn that on and stream the services. And everybody that was in that room would have to either sit down there, and a lot of those were good guys that were around him, and they would sit down, and there would be a streaming there of the service. And you see the testimony that was given throughout and how God came and really the testimony from his mother and different ones of how they saw a change in that young man's life and how God touched his life. We could look at it. I know how I looked at it. When I looked at it and before this happened, I thought, Lord, what plans do you have for this young man? What is it that you have in store? But you see, God looks at completion in a way that we look at it or we look totally different at completion than the way God does. There's a purpose that it is to be fulfilled. As a matter of fact, the whole purpose of our journey in being here in this life is not about this life. This life is not about this life. This life is the opportunity to be prepared for the next life. That's what it's all about. And real completion is, is where we've come into that place, we're ready to go, and we are serving and have served God's purpose. You realize that even when that gun went off in the prophet's face, when he was shooting that gun, that they had, you know, had rebored and made into a different type of gun, and it went off in his face, and the doctor told him, he said, I don't know how your head is still on your shoulders. It should have been off. He said, the only thing I know to tell you is, is that God has had his hand upon you. Why? Because the purpose wasn't fulfilled yet. And Brother Bram said, what that lets me know is there's some more sick people to be prayed for. There's some more to be here. And I just say it like this, no matter where you're at, you can say you're sitting right here as a young person, full of the Spirit of God, but there is something that God has for you to do. There's more that God has for you. 
And I just say, Lord, I want to fulfill all that you have for me. So when we look at this word incomplete, complete itself, it deals with filling to the top. Kind of be like a glass over there. If somebody gave you one of them big styrofoam cups and only had halfway full, you'd wonder what's going on. Did they run out of lemonade or something? Right? You'd wonder. You know, it'd be like if they gave me a big old plate and only put a little bit of apple crisp. What happened? Did you run out of it? Right? You want it, you want it, you know, to, to fill it. You're expecting that cup to be filled. I know some of you thinking, here he goes on apple crisp again. Just trying to drop some hints. So here, complete is to fill to the top to where there's nothing wanting. It's to carry through to the end, to accomplish, to carry out an undertaking. It's also to bring into effect or realization every promise of that God has made and God's promises that are given through his prophets to receive fulfillment. Now, you know, sometimes when we look at God's promises to be fulfilled, Sometimes it's in, in order for those to be fulfilled, because that's what the word complete means. We find that there were different ones, like you take Mary and Joseph. They had to get into a position. There had to come a pressure upon them to get them into a place for the word to be fulfilled. They were driven by the pressures, and they journeyed there into Egypt. Why? God had made a promise spoken through a prophet out of Egypt, I have called my son. Sometimes we look at it in our lives, and I'm just speaking from personal experience. You wonder why certain things of why is this friend turning against me, or or why is this happening, or why is this falling apart, or why is this taking place? I remember how it was when God was getting a hold of my life. God was dealing with my life. Why was it certain things were taking place? My life was almost taken. My car was totaled. Why was it things were taking place in that way? Why was it the way that God was dealing with me and, and causing certain things to be expressed out of my life? Why, why is that? God has a way of getting you and I into position that the word might come to pass in our life. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, those are not things that we would delight in. I didn't delight in having my car totaled and my life almost taken. I did not delight in having friends, you know, walk away. But there's one thing about it. I am so thankful that God, the same God that was moving everything into position, gave grace in that moment to await on him for him to complete what he had started. That's why Brother Brandon would say it like this talking about completion. He says, you know, I believe it's a time, he says, he says we've so many times built our churches upon sensations and different things, but you can't build upon nothing but Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing we can do. In him, you are complete, and without him, you're lost. So it's not just close to him we're complete, but in him we're complete. So we may, in him, we're complete. It's, it's the two pieces that like are coming together. How many ever put together a puzzle? Okay. And you know how it is. You might have been the one. Maybe I was the one sometimes. That we want to make sure we're, we're sitting there sorting out pieces and helping out. But we want to make sure we just go ahead and put one piece in our pocket because we want to be the last one to put the last piece in. Right? And you can have this nice big puzzle that's sitting out there. But if there's one piece missing... You just, you can't say it's complete. You just, it bugs you to death. You say, what do you do? You look around. You'll crawl on the floor. You'll look everywhere. Why? Because there is the desire to see it completed. And let me just say this to you. The Holy Spirit, he comes down to direct you and I and God in our lives so that every part might be completely surrendered to him. Let's look here in the scriptures in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. <laughs> the brothers are probably saying, that's what I'm talking about. But there's a principle that God 
has laid out in his word. As a matter of fact, it's God unfolding a mystery that's been in him the whole time. It's not good that man should be alone. That word alone, when you take the Hebrew letters, the word alone right there means it is a word that's broke out, B-A-D, bad. It is bad. It's not good for man to be alone. We were not meant to be alone. But God said, I will make an helpmate for them. So God knows what you and I have need of. It's not us seeking out God, it's God seeking out us. It's not us searching for him, it's God already knows what we have need of. Sure, even when it comes to a natural mate in life, God knows what we have need of. God knows how to bring those things together. Those are not things that you have to worry about. Let me say this to you. Any word of God that God has given, any promise, and there's a lot, and I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of that with husband and wife and male and female, but any promise that God has given, listen, you don't have to worry, fret, wonder, be uncertain. The thing of it is, is keep your focus in the Lord and let God direct your pathway. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct thy paths. That is God's promise to you and I and that brings a rest to you and I. And you know, you might look and say, well, I don't look like so-and-so. I don't look like so-and-so. But God has made you. Listen, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a reason in how that God has made you. You might say, well, this person isn't attracted to me or this person isn't attracted to you. You realize that that can be a great blessing because God, even in that right there, can be keeping things away from you that are not his will. Not saying that that other person is bad or that you're bad, but God has a purpose and a will to be fulfilled. And that of marriage is not just about you. It's about one another serving the will of God and the purpose of God mutually together now I want to bring it down into the personal it's not good that man should be alone I'll make a helpmate for him remember when God he brought all all throughout creation here and he's bringing all of the animals and the things to Adam and Adam is naming them and this is a horse and a lion and so forth But yet the Bible would say how that God could identify that for Adam there was not an helpmate found. So we recognize that when we see this, that when we look at completion, Adam in himself, in one respect of it, was not complete. Yet it was complete within, but it needed that part that was within him to come out that Adam might unite with what was within him. Is that all right? So the completion itself is that of a union of a male and female. That's why when you hear it expressed as the bride of Jesus Christ, it is that of the feminine, that of the female, that of of that one that will submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He is the male. That's where it's very clear. It says when he, the spirit of truth, is come. And to see that even in our lives, you realize God, just like when we came to camp here, uh, well, you know, when you came to camp, they didn't have to start building buildings and setting up beds and everything else. There was already, this ground was already prepared for you to come on, for us to come on and have camp. And that's the same way it is in your life. Brother Branham called it, and remember the four different types of ground. And Brother Branham calls it like this, the ground, that bedding ground, that seed of God. He said that is the pre-prepared ground for Almighty God. God has reserved the womb in our life. God has reserved that place in your life for himself. Nothing else will satisfy it. Nothing else will complete it. You can have a lot of other things of the world and it'll never completely satisfy that longings there because that is a place that is reserved completely unto God. It's just like your Bible. There's 66 books in the Bible, right? But you've got an Old Testament and a New Testament. The two halves together make the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. You can't just have the New Testament. You can't just have the Old Testament. But both of them together, as I told you before, it's kind of like when I go to Panera and I feel like somebody cheated me out a part of my sandwich. Now, I go there because my wife likes going there, you know, but uh, 
But you know how it is. If somebody gave you half a sandwich, you want to know, where's the other part? Right? A sandwich, when you think of a hamburger, you're not thinking of a half, like when they serve those hamburgers over there tonight. And I know because I've already looked at the menu. You're not expecting to get a half. You're expecting to get a whole, right? And I don't believe anybody in here is expecting to get just a halfway deliverance. I don't think anybody wants to live a halfway Christian life because there's no such thing as a halfway. It's either all the way or none of the way. Is that right? It's a total deliverance, a total, a complete that God works within our life. So we want the full package. Don't, don't give me just something halfway. I don't want just emotion. I don't want just sensations. I believe in emotion. I believe in all that. But listen, I don't want just that alone. I want him because then my emotion and everything is based off of him in me and I'm in him. So when I don't feel like a Christian, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with he abides. He abides. Hallelujah. He abides in me. So God's purpose is for a complete work. In the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, when God would write to the Sardesian age, he would write to them in verse 2 and in Revelation 3 verse 2 and say, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain and that are ready to die for I have not found thy works perfect before God, complete before God. So God's got an objective. God's got a purpose. Let me just tell you this as young people. When you leave this camp, it's important you feed your experience. Well, here we go with apple crisp again. I know inside that apple crisp they've got brown sugar. They've got oats, cinnamon. I know a little bit of that. And they got apples, right? But if somebody gave me a cup of apples, I would not eat that cup of apples and say, boy, this is good apple, Chris. Nope. Right? There's more to it. I would not eat the cup of oats and say, hey, this is a good piece of apple, Chris. Nope. All of those things go together to make apple, Chris. Let me just say this in your Christian walk with God. You know, when you look in your Bible, especially when you look in the Gospels many times, in the Gospels, depending on the Bible you've got, you'll find black letters and red letters, right? Red letters being that where Jesus himself, God speaking right directly through that vessel. Is that right? Red letter days, like what we had here last night. It was a red letter day, God pouring out his presence. But you know what? The majority of your days will be black letter days. There'll be days that you say, well, what? Well, how do I get red letter days? You got to have black letter days. Black letter days lead to red letter days. You, you can't have a fire if you don't got no wood. Come on now, we're talking about how to live complete in him, to live a victorious life. I'm trying to point you to something that when you leave outside of this atmosphere of where you're at, it's easy to live and walk in victory. It's easy to tell the devil he's a liar when you're surrounded here in this atmosphere. But I'm trying to point you to something that when you don't feel the presence of God around you, but yet there's a reality in you that can say, back up devil, I am a son and a daughter of God. Why? Because I am am complete in him. So sometimes, some days in our life is a cup of apples going in. The next day is a cup of oats. The next day is a cup of brown sugar. But get it all together. There'll be a red letter day. Right? Little by little by little by little by little. Well, Brother Samuel, I, I just, you know, I I need to feel this and I need to feel that. I hope this is all right. You know, we talk about habits. Sometimes we, somehow we get in our mind sometimes to feel like that, well, I'm just going to wait till, you know, God, you know, I, I'm just completely on fire for God and then that's when I'm going to get in the word of God. No, you've got to fall in love with him. It's falling in love with him. It's yielding your life to him. It's getting in good habits. Listen, it's very easy to get into bad habits. It's easy when you wake up of a morning to all of a sudden you check your Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is. The first thing that you check, what does that do? That sets the course of your day. It sets the course of your attitude. There's things that you can read on there, see on there, and it can weigh you and drag you right down. Why? It's a trap. 
is to realize, start your day with a lamb. Start your day. Brother Bram said, make it a habit. You make it a habit where you have to sit down. Well, I may not feel like it, but sit down and take a portion of the word of God. Brother Samuel, I'm going to sit down and read the whole book of Deuteronomy. Save your time. You're not going to sit down and do that. Start out with maybe you're starting out with a few verses in the book of Matthew. It isn't the quantity that matters. It's your quality. You could give a quantity of an hour and God hadn't had an ounce of, ounce of a minute out of it. Why? You could sit there and pray and all you keep thinking about is playing volleyball or thinking about this, but say, God, help me just to shut myself away. And let me tell you something. You don't even have to be on your knees when you pray. It's not the position of your body. It's the condition of your heart. God hears you. You can be driving down the road, walking in your school. God hears you when you pray. I believe, I think we all believe in getting alone and praying with the Lord. But you know, there's times when I walk out of my office or times through the day when I'll just walk by and tell my wife, I love you, honey. I appreciate all you do. And I don't, I don't spend, it ain't going to go into a big conversation or anything like that. I just pass by and let her know, honey, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for what you do. And you know, there's times like that. Don't let a moment go by when there's something that strikes your heart that, God, I remember how you touched me at camp. Just thank him in that moment. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for ministering to my heart, for speaking to my life, Lord. I love you, and you keep on walking. What is it? It's a fellowship. He's walking right with you, even in you. Be watchful. Strengthen those things that remain, that are about ready to die, because God's original plan is that not only we would be justified, but be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the very reason that God justifies, sanctifies, is that we might be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Paul would say it like this in Colossians 1.25, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me summarize all three of those verses. How do I fulfill the will of God? By yielding to the word of God. Yielding to his presence. In other words, God's desire in bringing his word to pass in your life, that's what he's doing, to bring his word to pass in your life, it's where your life becomes an open display of the glory of God. Well, Brother Samuel, you know, on my job or in school or, or my family and my church, yes, God wants your life to be an open display of the glory of God. Let me tell you, don't, listen, Paul told Timothy, don't despise thy youth. Listen, don't expect in your youth that God does a work in your life and all of a sudden you're going to, in that, in that, God did a work in my life and I'm going to be where Brother Daryl is at. That has been years of molding and making and shaping, but I can tell you the reason Brother Daryl is where he is is because of God's grace. And God has brought him that way. God has molded that character. And from the moment that God met him, there's not been a stop. There's not been a dying, but it's been a continual yielding. Sometimes it's been a wrestling out. How do you know that? Because I know what I'm talking about within my own self. And that's the same way it is in your life. Don't let the devil put in your mind as though that all of a sudden when the Holy Ghost comes, you're going to start acting like a 50-year-old man. You're not going to act like a 50-year-old man. But the Holy Ghost in you will act how a 15-year-old should act, how a 13-year-old should act, how an 18-year-old should act. God has witnesses and trophies of his grace that the Holy Ghost can take a hold of young people in this hour and express the glory of God and say here's young people that are standing as witnesses and overcomers as trophies of this end time message. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why Paul when he showed up in the coast of Ephesus he started talking to some of them believers that were there and they were believers but he noticed how they were talking and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Because see, just believing 
is not enough. That's a start. Right? That's, that's faith. It's a believing. But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we ain't heard whether there's been any Holy Ghost. So Paul started there and let them know the atonement has come. The sacrifice has been offered up. You don't need to wait on it. You don't need to tarry on it. The promise that was made, the sacrifice, the provision has already been offered up. And it is here to be fulfilled inside of your life. What did they do? They yielded to the word of God and they received the Holy Ghost. Right? They were baptized in the name of of Jesus Christ. That's why I say, if you've not been baptized in Christian baptism, but say, I've been baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I said Christian baptism. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not Christian baptism. Christian baptism is to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to take on his name, to be identified with him. It's you making a declaration that the old man is dead and there is a new man, a new woman coming forth because of God's amazing grace. This is why God here, when we see two parts, there's two parts to redemption. God would even speak, come out from among them. Be you separate. And you look and you like look in your life and say, well, well, I'm just to lay this down. But sometimes, listen, friends, sometimes there's things that we lay down and we lay it down out here, but we don't lay it down in here. If you lay it down just because you know it's wrong, you'll pick it back up. Brother Samuel, then what should I do? I'm supposed to lay it down. No, what God is saying, let your heart come out from those things. Let your heart turn loose of those things. That's where you be honest with God. Listen, nobody here, nobody here. We don't want to put on a show. We don't want to try to act like anything. We want to be real with God. God wants us to be real with him. I think of what Brother Branham preached the Jehovah Jireh series in Grass Valley, California. Brother Branham ends in that message and he said, oh, how I would love to come back here and set up a tent someday. He said, and just preach. He said, because there are honest hearts right here. When the Spirit of God is speaking, there were hearts that were turned, being turned over to God and getting right with God. What God desires is an honest heart. God does not come down to scare you you, intimidate you, drive you behind the bush, but God wants to call you out because he wants to change you. He wants to free you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to complete himself in you. Come out from among. I'd say, Lord, remedy my heart. Let everything, Lord, from within me. If the, word, if the Holy Spirit speaking to my heart, Lord, amen. Stand on the word. When the word's coming, but Brother Sam, you don't know how long I've had this problem, but if the word is true, listen, the word is more true. I'm going to preach now. The word is more true than the circumstances you're setting in. The circumstances you're sitting in, it only takes a moment for those circumstances to change. But the heavens and earth Though it can pass away, but not one word of God shall fail. And that's why when you want to stand with the word of God, but you don't know me, you don't know my circumstance. No, God knows you. He knows you that's beneath the darkness. God knows you, and God is looking for you. And if you just agree with the word of God, so be it. Amen. Let it be, Lord, in my life. What is it? It's you separating from unbelief that's around your life. God said, I'll be a father to you. You'll be my son, my daughter. There's two parts to redemption. There's two parts. There's coming out and going in. Remember Israel, they came out of Egypt. Is that right? And they came out of Egypt, and they got content. They saw them giants that were over there. These giants are too big. They got content. They got fearful, and they got content. What they missed is what the living God that was among them. All they had to do was look, your clothes are intact. How that God consumed Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea? I mean, when's the last time you ever walked through a sea that had parted and on dry ground? Come on. Let me say this. The same God that's done that is the same God that's made a way for you. He's the same God that makes a way. Listen, I know there's a song that says he, may, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. Let me correct that. God makes a way where there 
is no way. He is our way. It isn't like, well, I, there seems to be. No, there is no other way. He is the only way. He's the same God that made a way through Jericho. He's the same God that made a way for Rahab to come out. He's the same God that made a way for Ruth. He's the same God over and over. He's made a way time and time again. And he's the same God to make a way for you. There's two parts to it. We want to go in. We don't want to just, we don't want to just come out. We want to go in all the way. We want to go all the way with God. You don't want to stop. You want to go on the way. Listen, let me say this. You want a fresh experience with God. You want a fresh experience. No, I'm not trying to live on an experience from, from yesterday or another day. You want a fresh experience with God. I'm talking about when you go home from here, you want a fresh experience with God. Brother Sammy, you don't know our church. Listen, stop making your church an excuse and pray and ask God. Say, Lord, let the anointing fall in my church, Lord, like it failed there at camp, Lord God. Anoint the man of God. Maybe you'll be the channel that the Holy Spirit will work through. You say, I'm just one person. Let me tell you, the Scripture are full of individuals that were one person that let go and let God have his way. Gideon was a man who was incomplete before he met God. And when God came to Gideon, he said, hey, hey, that mighty man of valor. Gideon said, who else is here? Because I ain't no, I ain't nothing but a fraidy cat. Who else is here? Right? He thought he talking to somebody else besides me. No, no, no. God let him know, I'm talking to you. I don't care what your complexes are. I don't care how, what you think about yourself. My family's the least and, and this. But you see, God don't give up. God didn't give up and say, oh, he's got a complex. I'll back away from him. Because his, his family's not real known. You know, in the church, not real prominent. They don't seem to do anything. Nobody's got a position. Nobody seems specials. And they just kind of feel insignificant. So I'll just back away from him because anything's got a complex. No, God's word can't be defeated. And God, will. he sends his word, he'll tear down every wall. He'll tear down every circumstance. He'll dismantle every complex. Why? To lead you and I out to victory. All God needs is one person. Well, Brother Samuel, if my church was completely on fire, why don't you get on fire? Oh, my. Be on fire. Don't underestimate your youth. I'll tell you right now, there's nothing more powerful than to see young people when older people who've had the same experience, they see the experience of God burning in your life. You standing up here singing specials, yielding your talents to God, being a witness and being a help right there that, that, that are, are just enthralled with the Word of God. That is a joy in the hearts of the older ones. Why? Because they are seeing God keep His promise once again of a fresh visitation to every generation. Hallelujah. That's encouraging. Hallelujah. Don't ever let the enemy underestimate what God has for you. So entering into this rest with God, it's where we enter in. Paul wrote of it in Hebrews 4. We labor, we move to enter into that rest. And the Bible said, for he that was entered into his rest. Let me back up and pick that up. Hebrews 4.1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of so entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. What would you think of somebody for your own self or for me? You're running a race. And you stop short of the finish line. You didn't finish the race, did you? You have to go across the finish line. There's a finish line. We don't want to fall short. We want to see it to completion. And when we've, when, as when we've been entered into God's rest, then it's no longer us trying. It's not, it's not us trying to do right. It's not us trying to live right. It now is Christ in us living his own life through us. And it's his desire. It's God on the inside. Listen. You're a new creation. Remember, the completion is male and female. God coming and uniting with that part of himself that's in you. And what does that do? It brings a complete revelation. It brings a completion in your life. 
it brings a completion where then as a new creature, then you begin to build. Then you begin to grow. Then you grow and grow and grow and mature, serving out the purpose of Almighty God. Our desires are changed then. We want to go all the way. Now let me, let me kind of turn this here. In John 14, and thinking back to that scripture we read, it's not good for man to be alone. In John 14, Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So it's not good for man to be alone. Man was made and built in, in, in such a way, a place within man, that that place when man fell, when he walked away, then that place that was filled by God, it became vacant. In other words, man now was walking alone. So, you know, it's not, that's why as we look, it's not just enough to be around the message. It's not just enough to be around the truth. But God's desire is that this word, that he would live inside of you. That's God's desire. That's real completion. And to think that when we look at this in this manner, it brings, there's a satisfaction. You know, Jesus had prayed that your joy may be complete, that your joy may be full. And Brother Ram talks about this comforter, you know. He speaks of how this comforter is. And, you know, let me, just, let me just say it like this. One of the things that this comforter, it brings a satisfaction. How many of you know what it means to be satisfied? Yeah. Sometimes you hear you, after you've eaten, you're satisfied. When you're full, you're satisfied. It's something about it. You're satisfied. There's, there's nothing else that you want. You're just satisfied. But take that even into a different level when the Holy Ghost has come. There's a satisfaction that comes down into your life. It's a satisfying. That's why when you're pouring, as you're pouring your heart out to God, you're surrendering, Lord, give me that satisfying portion, Lord. To where it, there's a satisfaction that's entered in, to where that even as when the music isn't going, Brother Bram said, even when that music isn't going, he said, you'll be in the car in the road. Maybe you'll be doing work, doing school, but there's still the joy bells that's ringing inside of your life because your life is not dependent upon any music, emotion, but your life, there is a satisfaction because Christ in you, the hope of glory is dwelling there. Is that right? So now... There's only one way, he said, that we'll be able to receive this wonderful comforter. Is when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, confess your sins, repent, and have Christian baptism administered to you, and a promise that God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's his promise. He cannot go back on that. So God's never made a promise that he can't keep. God keeps and he fulfills every word. Now I want you to listen to this. But the said, the reason that many people don't receive this comforter is because it interferes with their spiritual life that they desire to live. That's why they don't receive it, because it's what's, this is going to get taken away from my life. Oh, I, I, this is, I, I can't let go of this. See, that's where it's got to come a death. That's where it has to come a death. It's where on the inside to die to the things of the world. Lord, let me die with mine enemy. Let me die to these things, Lord, in my life. As I've said over and over, that if there's things right now that you know it's interfering, that there is pulls and there's a love that's there in your life, listen, that's where you say, God, come, Lord, quench that, Lord. Let it be that that is driving out, Lord, in my life. I don't want that in my life. I don't want anything that interferes with you coming. And frankly, I'll tell you right now, even where I stand right now, I don't want anything that interferes with more of God. I don't want anything. 
That's evaluating many different things in our life, whether it's job, whether it's going here, whether it's moving here, whether it's house, whether it's car. Listen, those are many things that we look at and say they're natural things, but you realize sometimes the enemy can come and bring such a snare and an entrapment to wherein people think, well, God's blessing me. He is? Yeah, God's blessing me. I, you know, I've only got to work three Sundays out of the month. I don't call that God's blessing. I call that a trap of the devil. Because it's the will of God that we're in the house of God. The Bible said, do not forsake not to assemble yourselves together. Is that right? There's a simple way to evaluate what is God's promise, what is God's blessing, and what is a trap. Because God's blessing will never lead you from the word of God. If there's a young lady or a young man that's leading you away from your walk with God, let me just tell you right now, that's not God's will. Is that all right? It may not be, and you know, it, may, it might, might be for something at a later time, but let me just tell you something right now. Let God fulfill his word. Joseph and Mary never had to worry about, oh, I got to get in position, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. They didn't know what was taking place. The only thing they did, they yielded to what the Spirit was moving upon them. I'm sure it wasn't comfortable. I'm sure there were things. It was not a joy ride to venture down to Egypt when Mary was expecting like she was but there was a presence of God's amazing grace that was there to bring them in position and that's the same way it is for your life in all that God has for your life you realize brother Branham taught us one thing I love that message visions of William Branham love it brother Branham talks about how a very it's a very very simple message but brother Branham's going through those visions and brother Branham talks about how that when he went in there with uh, Graham I think brother, brother 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 Graham Snelling went up there to pray for that young child first brother Branham went up there by vision and he went to go pray for that little boy and when brother Branham he went, walked right in that house picked that little boy up and he began to pray for it and the baby got worse Brother Bram didn't understand what was taking place, but then God was teaching him something. But to me, God wasn't just teaching the prophet something. He was teaching you and I something. This word is a vision of God that's broken in this generation. You see, even in your life and my life, there's a vision that breaks before your life. That's why that victory itself is not something you're stumbling, staggering, bumbling into. But vi victory becomes vision before you. That you can see yourself as a perfectly victorious, perfectly healed person. And then Brother Bram said, you walk step by step by step until you become that person. So the word Word is an open vision that breaks over our life. But you realize you can't put the glasses in place if they need to be right here and the handkerchief has to be right here and you've got to be sitting there and so-and-so's got to be sitting over there. You, God does not entrust me or nobody else to say, hey, Brother Chad, you, you're supposed to be over here. Hey, hey Brother Woosley, you're supposed to be over there. Hey, so-and-so, you're supposed to be over here. God don't need man's help to orchestrate the word coming to pass. He don't need your help in orchestrating the word coming to pass. But Brother Bram, you, Brother, Brother Sammy, you just said dying to myself. That's you yielding to the presence of God that though the glasses may be here, look at it in your life. Your glass, the glasses might be here, that part of your life. But the grace of God that's being released is causing your heart to move into the position that God has ordained in order for the vision to break forth in your life. God is working all things out. Brother Branham had to wait there until later in the evening. He had to wait on certain people to arrive. Well, Brother Samuel, he had a vision. He was the prophet of God. Let's just say it right now. Brother Branham's flesh never performed any miracle. He was the prophet of God, but he was the channel of God. To be a prophet of God is to be a spokesman of God. We have not received a man's will. We have not received a man's word. We have received, thus saith the Lord, from Almighty God in this generation. Let me get to this point here. Man was made to want to be comforted. How many of you like to be liked? Some of you say, I don't care. No, you're not telling the truth. I like being liked. I better not get too close to that thing. I like being liked. I like being comforted. I like being accepted. But the, the line comes is that if something goes against the word of God, see you. 
I said, if it comes against the word of God, see you. I, I appreciate that. We all, God's made us that way. That's a, natural, that's a natural part to want to be accepted. But you want it governed by God. Now watch how Brother Bram says this. He was made to want to be comforted. I think this is a powerful, powerful quote. Just stay with me here a few minutes. He said, if he doesn't accept it God's way, then he'll take away for himself. He'll try to substitute something to take the place of that Holy Spirit. He said, a man or woman, listen to this now, that will not accept the Holy Spirit, the comforter, will try to comfort themselves with some violent substitute that Satan will present to them, and Satan has got plenty of substitutes. Some violent substitute. That's a pretty heavy word. If he won't accept God's comforter, he'll accept Satan will give him a violent substitute. Violent is something that intends to bring harm. Anything that Satan gives you, it's going to bring harm to your life. It's going to work to try to tear you down, dismantle your faith. Listen, it only takes little by little. You know how it is. Mama told us not to eat junk food, right? We go in there and eat a little Debbie and think, man, one little Debbie, I'm hungry. And they need a little, another little Debbie, another little Debbie, another little Debbie. Sounds pretty good about right now. But by the time you get done eating all them little Debbies, after a while, you might start feeling sick. And it'll start affecting you. Why? You're not getting the proper nutrients and it starts tearing down your life. That's the same way. Listen now, Satan himself would love to do nothing more than to give you a substitute. He'd love for you to exchange a real experience with God in the depths of your soul for just an emotion. He'd love for you to walk away with just an emotion of, or a sensation or something like that. Not against that. But he would love for that to be what you would take. He would love for you to take the substitute of just, you know what? Well, I believe the message. I believe Brother Ram's the prophet. But you see, the devil in hell believes that and he trembles. They know that. But Satan would love to give all these other substitutes. He's done that with their religions throughout the world. He's given plenty of substitutes. But how the enemy, he will want to bring a violent substitute in your life. I want to remind you when Satan comes, John 10.10 10 said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's where a thief comes. If it was a robber, a robber comes and makes his intentions up front. Right? But a thief comes with stealth. A thief moves in with very slyly, very subtly, smooth words, pulls upon your reasoning. And the intent is, is ultimately to destroy you. Now I pray to God that some of the, th some of the different ones that maybe you've seen, you know. And here, they once stood on these grounds. Maybe they were here at the altar. No doubt at some time. And then you look and you say, well, where are they? What happened to them? What, what, what took place within their life? Well, it's, it's evident it wasn't completed in their life. It's evident that they really didn't go on with God. It's evident that there were things in their life that they reasoned with and did not die to. Satan never, never, never put them in a headlock and drug them away, but there was things in their life that eventually led them away from the truth. You see, whatever, that's why you need to be sure whatever's in you. And if there's things there that is not lining up with the Word of God, say, Lord, take my life through the Word of God. Let every desire, let every motive, let every objective, let it all be pulled through your word, Lord. But Jesus said this, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. God's a God of contrast. Think about it in this way. Satan's objective is to come. And I think in this hour, you know, for us and myself and no doubt many older ones that are in here, there are things like this that, we never had to even deal with. I mean, frankly, for us right now, those that are parents, we're dealing with things our parents never dealt with. Other things, you know, it was one thing for our parents to tell us, give us curfews and things like that. We're, we're, we're dealing with a total different things. 
And we got a choice. We can either put our head, heads in the sand and act like there ain't nothing to it, or we can say, God, give us grace, direction, and leadership that we be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan's got plans. He's got purposes. Let me tell you something. The Bible said that Satan, it says, thou didst weaken the nations. In the book of Nahum, it says of how that that great whore that through her sorceries and witchcraft, she did deceive families. And we find this stream. Brother Branham, think how Brother Branham would write, would speak of it when he speaks of invasion of the United States. In perfect strength, by perfect weakness, he would tell us the lid's been taken off a well and there are streams of demon power. And he would say, in invasion of the United States, demons streaming in from Hollywood. You say, Brother Samuel, those are just words. I don't think so. I'm looking at it. Listen, those demon spirits were already there. It's just like there's waves going through this room right now. It's just like there's waves from this belt pack that I'm wearing right now. There are waves. There's a signal that's going out to a receiver that's set up somewhere around here in order to process the signal. Let me tell you, those demon spirits... They've always been here. And now there's moments, there's opportunities, there's portals, there's channels like it was in the days of Noah where the Bible said that the earth was filled with violence through them. But there was also a man on earth by the name of Noah. He became a channel that righteousness could be fulfilled through. You see, the way, the reason that the enemy wants to use these things, well, it can start out very, very innocent. Very innocent how things can go. You watch one YouTube, watch another, watch another. And then the enemy also knows things you searched. And he wants to try to entrap you and ensnare you. He wants to tear down. You know what he wants to do? He wants to take the innocency away from your life. He wants to put in, he wants to wrap your life in such a way to where it seems like there's no value to it. But let me tell you, there's value to your life. There might have been things that you're overtaken with, but he shed his blood for you that you can go free. Think of this in this manner. I'm coming down. Your mind is a no man's land. You got decisions to make, right? You'll have decisions to make all the way through your life. Your mind is a no man's land. What that means is it's like where you have two opposing forces coming together. You've got a choice on what goes into that mind. It'd be like here in this auditorium, right? They put chairs in here. They could have filled this place with tables. It's a choice. I think it's better having chairs here for us to sit on and a little bit more comfortable having to sit on, on tables. But you see, your mind, it matters what you put in it. It's a no man's land. You might wonder in your life, listen to me now, I'm preaching to every one of us here, whether young or old. It matters what you put in your mind. If you feed on negative things, you wonder and say, where did this depressing spirit come from? Where did this gloom come from? I'm going to ask you a question. What have you been feeding on? What have you been looking at? And let me tell you something. There's all kinds of liars on Facebook and Instagram and everything else that post these kind of things with doctored up photos and they're standing in front of like this happy vacation and everything else. And all this is out there to try to do what? It's not that they're trying to make you feel bad, but Satan turns those things around and he tries to draw you out based on those things and make you feel less than what you really are. You are precious in the sight of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And I think if there's one book that we need to have our face in, it's this Facebook right here. It's this one right here because in this one, there's all kinds of likes. In this one, these are all kinds of people that we can follow in here. They are examples to you and I. They are those that we can read about, look about, and take courage from. Like you and I can look at Gideon and identify with it when the word was speaking to our life and say, I didn't see that about my life. Maybe you can say, I don't see that about my life. But God sees something in you and we can look at that and we're encouraged. We've never seen the time where young people dealing with depression, suicide, all these other spirits that are out there. I want you to understand, God's not putting you down. 
let's just call Satan's hand to this. It isn't that you're some weakling. It isn't that you're some bad person. But all it takes is Satan to start putting forth his spiritual algorithm. And you go from this to this. You might like this. So if you like this, you might like this. If you like this, you might like this. If you like these, then you might like these. See, Satan's objective is to get you all twisted up. But God's desire is to bring completion in your life. Let me just bring it down here. A lot of wonderful things that God has done right here. In this camp. Now as I'm bringing it down, don't go to lunch on me. God's done many wonderful things already. There's things that God wants to do. God wants to do more. But I want to remind you that the things that God has done in your life. You see, the scripture says, because you've got to be able to stand when you when you go out of here, you've got to be able to stand. Brother Doug talked about it. I remember when God got a hold of my life. What was the first thoughts that hit my life? How am I going to stand with those, with those people? How am I going to stand with those that I've run with and everything? How am I going to do that? You know, it was a fear that tried to creep in. But you know, even though that fear tried to creep in, it couldn't undo what God had did. But there was a stand that had to be made. Brother Samuel, were you laughed out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I went from, you know, things where you're known and so forth, and then you have different ones coming to you. And I had it coming for years. Sometimes even when I was working and, you know, and selling suits, fitting them while I was going through college and so forth, and had people come in, and all of a sudden I'd hear the laughter. Because I worked the Friday nights. Nobody else wanted to work Friday nights. And they would laugh. <laughs> There's Browning. Hey, Browning, where are you at? What's taking place? But they had already heard the testimony. But you know, it was just trying to poke fun. You see, but it, it was a spirit trying to get at me. But the thing that I continued to stand upon is what I knew from within. I'm not the same man. The guy that used to run in the world and love the things of the world, that guy don't live here no more. I've met, this, I've met the living God. Of course, the things that they were, they were told, rumors got around. <laughs> Sam's been to church camp. His mom and dad sent him to a youth camp and he got brainwashed. That was, that was rumors that came out later. Because you don't know why? Different ones had seen me at many times where I made promises. I'm not going to end up back here again. Coming out of jail, I'm not going back there again. I'm not going to be picked up again. I'm not going to be doing those things again. I don't say that proudly. I say that shamefully. But I'll let you know that what God's grace did in my life, he did something that all the promises that I could ever make, I could never keep those promises. You want to know why? There was desires that was still in here that God had to come and there had to be a death to that and God had to burn that out and fill it with himself. And that's why in your life, it's, you, it's a necessity that Christ himself be placed fully in your life. You see, when the, the Bible says when the unclean spirit is gone out, he goes and he looks, walks in dry places, looks for seven other spirits. And he's going to come back to that house because he's expecting, I left out of that house, but that's my house. I'm going back to it. But you, what you want to make sure is once the spirit has gone, once it's left your life, you want to make sure you get that area in your life filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Word of God. Then you're able to stand complete in Him. And let me just say this to you. I'm closing. Think of it like this. I've read you the scripture, ye are complete in him. We read that together. 
Brother Branham would pick it up and lean not to your own understanding. And he said, God isn't complete without you. We are a part of him. Always was a part of him. We're always sons and daughters of God. We're always sheep. We didn't become sheep one certain day. But you see, it's why the voice of the shepherd calls us out to bring us to an experience that it might be manifest in our life as a son of God, as a daughter of God, not just something that I'm just saying, but something that comes from within. God's desire is for completion in our life. And I say this morning, Lord, complete it, Lord. No matter where you're at in your walk with God, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you say, Brother Samuel, I've got that satisfaction in my soul. I know in whom I have believed. I've, I've passed from death unto life. That's, I think that's tremendous. That's praise be to God. But don't stop. Let God complete what he wants to do through your life. There's a purpose that God has for you. Maybe you're sitting here. You've accepted him as your savior. But there's still the desires of the world are still burning in your heart. This is where you say, Lord, finish this work, Lord. You said, Lord, that you who begun a good work in me, you'd perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, complete the work. Complete the work in my life. Lord, burn out every desire, everything that's unlike you. Burn it out, Lord. And Father, take full preeminence in my life. Complete this work. I don't want to be a puzzle that's missing one piece. I don't want to be one that stops short of the finish line. I don't want to be like one that's just a half of a sandwich. I don't want to be just an Old Testament or a New Testament. I want to be a complete son. I want to be a complete healer. Is that your desire? Complete healing. Complete deliverance. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many say, Lord, that's my desire. Completion. Complete, Lord, in me. Maybe it's him working, bringing completion of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Maybe the completion is God working out the purpose that he has in your life. But to say, Lord, I want to be complete. When I leave this camp, I want to be complete, Lord. I don't want anything lacking. I don't want to, I don't want to walk out of here with one missing piece. But I want that satisfaction in the depth of my soul that you promised, Lord. That when I meet the enemy, because we will meet him, but I want to have something in me. I want to have the word of God in me that's standing. His strength in my life. God bless you. God bless your hands. God bless you. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, you've just been moving among us, Lord, in such wonderful ways, speaking to our hearts and our lives encouraging us, Lord, strengthening us, giving us courage to reach out and take a hold of the promise of God. Lord, I realize that when we leave out of this campground, Satan is going to be right there to contest everything that you have done. Lord Jesus, it will take more than a feeling. It's going to take something deeper, Lord, than a sensation. It'll take something more than our favorite song. It's going to take you, Lord, to where we're not just a half 
we're not just alone, but where, Lord, when that completion has come, Lord, you come to this temple. Come into this life, into that bedding ground. Then you step back and say, behold, it is good. Lord Jesus, this is our desire. You've promised us in this hour a total deliverance. Lord, I know what you did for me. You'll do for every young person, Lord. You, Lord, you took my life. You changed my life. You'll do it for, you'll do it for them, Lord. Dear God, the work that you start, you finish it. And I pray that, Lord, as these hands have been lifted up to you, Father, that God, the desire is, Lord, I don't want to be a puzzle with a missing piece. I don't want to be a picture that's missing something, but that my life, Lord, it would be complete in you. Help us, Lord. Grant it, Lord, I pray. May you grant that desire, Lord, that desire that comes from you, Lord, that that desire to be comforted, Lord. Grant it, Lord, I pray. May every substitute, Lord, that the enemy has desired to offer, Lord, every entrapment. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, if there be any spirit that, Lord, would still be remaining and wanting to hold around and holding in a life, Father, under the authority, of the Holy Ghost that you placed in my heart, Lord, by your word. Satan, we adjure you to take your leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord, I pray. Grant it, Lord Jesus. May you continue, Lord, to fulfill your word in our midst, Lord. Continue to pour out, Lord, of your spirit, Lord in our lives. Continue, Lord, bringing healing in lives, Lord God. Continuing to minister, Lord God, to every life and every heart, Lord God. I pray that, Lord, throughout this building, Lord God, no doubt sitting here, Lord God, our pillars, Lord, will be pillars, Lord, in their local assembly, Lord God. No doubt some, Lord, ministers, deacons, and Lord God, wives, and Lord God, those that, Lord, to sing specials. Lord, whatever it is in the economy of God, if it's, Lord, to just, Lord, to pray for the ministry Every part is vital, Lord. And we want to complete what you've ordained for us, Lord, to complete. Grant it, Lord, for it's not good for man to be alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, grant it, Lord, for your glory. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? We sing if you'd like prayer this morning, we'd be happy to pray with you.
Let it be resolved, resolved. Lord, I'm not going to leave you until you've completed what you've started. You see, when you get desperate for something, a thirst is a painful desire. You've just got to have it. And I encourage you, don't leave until you've been satisfied. There's a satisfaction inside of your soul. And I know I've passed from death unto life. The, the desires, the things of the world, that there's something happened to me I can't explain. But don't stop short. I want to meet you on the other side. Don't, don't give up. Maybe even in your frustration, don't give up. Let him finish the work. You might have walked away from a puzzle before because you got frustrated. You weren't finding pieces to put in there. Don't walk away from him. He knows how to put the pieces together in your life. He knows how to put everything right in its place. Just, just be patient and look to him and just give the Lord room to move in your life. Let him complete his work in your life. That's the greatest thing that we can have to take place. Amen. God bless you this morning. Go ahead. All flow through me, Holy Spirit flow through me, flow through me, Holy Spirit flow through me.
about a few things here so the leaders can go if you feel to stay in worship let the leaders go out and we'll dismiss you here shortly change my heart oh god make it ever 